Uh, I hope this message finds you well. I am a new believer, but I'm not sure where to begin. What ramification of Christianity to follow or how to discern between good and bad advice and religious leaders? Or is reading the Bible enough? In addition, I feel some insecurities concerning if I am closing myself to other ideas and possibilities by becoming Christian. And I feel like I kind of still want to sin <laughs> and not change my lifestyle. I get you. <laughs> as you know that, uh, as I know that you are a relatively recent Christian, do you have any advice on how to approach this? And in your opinion, what does it mean to be Christian? Yes, of course I have some advice because I think about the very same things. I deal with the very same things. Um, let's do this piecemeal. Let's bounce around a little bit here. So closing yourself off to other ideas and possibilities other than Christianity. That's where I was in my 20s up through my mid-30s, and I've been all around the place. In my early 30s, I was into in my early 20s, I was into um, Eastern. I, became, I found Eastern religion. So I was into Taoism, lots of books of Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism. Um, dabbled with it quite a bit in the reading of these books and, uh, and Alan Watts and Osho, the, I would read these guys' books and I would, I would listen to their lectures. And if there was a place to go sign up and be it, I might have done that, right? I was just very fascinated with it because I never learned, I never heard of these, these uh, ideas. Little did, did I know that Christianity is very mystical, but I didn't know that, right? Because we live in a world that is antichrist. So they do everything to hide the truths about Christianity and then uplift everything else, you know, like they're doing, anyway, I don't want to go off into too many tangents, but the whole idea is to suppress that which built the West and then bring in, flood it with a lot of, confusion and the way you do that is by bringing in strange fire right strange gods so uh the west has been inundated with quote-unquote strange gods and i'll tell you what i mean even deeper in a moment so eastern i was into the eastern then bro i a lot of people you know what book i was sent more than any the greatest evangelists out there are muslims so many, I got Muslim friends and I got Muslim fans. I must have, I, I don't have them anymore, but I must have gotten at least six Qurans. And I've, I've flipped through and I've, I read books about Muhammad. Uh, you know, I was, I was into all that. I looked, it, I looked into it. Then for a good solid couple of years, I joined the Baha'i faith, which is an Abraham, Abrahamic faith, which is, uh, which is, it is is universalism basically it's a it's a it's an abrahamic religion that says all religions are right and so that was very pleasing to my egos in my in my uh mid 20s i even got married you know in a baha'i ceremony very pleasing to my ego because i didn't want to discern i didn't want to say no to anyone uh we grew up in a world where everything and everyone should be okay which uh, in my wisdom i've discovered is not <laughs> right we're not all the same and not everything is of equal value. That's not true. Um, but I wanted to believe that because I grew up in a world where that was promoted and the Baha'i faith allowed me to be everything. I can just be everything. Uh, but I, st the reason why I adopted the faith is because I have this, I just have this strong, God calls me. God has been calling me. God has been calling me for a long time. And, uh, I took a lot of bait on my way. And I took, I took the Baha'i and the Baha'i faith is Abrahamic. So it, 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 it smells a little bit like Christianity. It's got a little bit of the Christian and Muslim Abrahamic Judeo-Christian feel to it. And that felt real. That felt good to me. That felt right to me. Uh, then, so, you know, we're going all the way from the East. I was into the Baha'i stuff, which is Abrahamic, but not Christian because I was so anti-Christ that I was just like, no. Um, then I was deep into the New Age. And most of you guys know me mostly in my New Age phase. 
And that was, you know, all the chakras and crystals and spiritualism and the occult. And I got into, I got into astrology. Uh, and, you know, I took courses on this shit. Like, I go deep, bro. <laughs> and so I'm telling you this because you ask me about other possibilities out there. And I understand that. I understand that sense. And I tried them all. <laughs> <laughs> basically all Scientology, man. I thought Scientology was so freaking cool. I got Scientology books. I got Scientology friends. When there was a Scientology channel that used to come on the TV and I would just sit there and I watch the Scientology thing. It was at a stage in my life where I recognized like, you know, I need to just slow down and, and let God speak to me rather than chasing everything. Otherwise I would have chased, I live in Clearwater. You know, Clearwater is the home of Scientology. Scientology, Christian Science, Uni Unity Church, uh, various forms of Protestantism. Uh, what else? Can't say I was Sikh or Zoroastrian, but I know what they are because I dig deep into all these things. And I was into philosophies, the occult stuff, man. The occult stuff, I was deep. I was, you know, I it was useful because the occult is about secret knowledge, right? And it turns out that that's the knowledge from the, from the tree we shouldn't be eating from. It's that very secret knowledge that gets us screwed up. It, and, there, and what's so screwed up about it is that it's powerful. It's fucking powerful. This shit is true. But we're, now we're dabbling. And this is when I started to recognize that a good percentage, most, I would say, of everything that I just described to you are various forms of demon worship, fallen angels, delivered these, delivered these ideas to us, uh, um, pagan religions. So, and I'm not making any judgment about it because I've been there. I've been all over, bro. I've been all over. I'm a seeker, right? I'm a seeker. And guess what? I'm going to answer your question now when it comes to various Christian denominations. I've been all over the place with Christianity too. And I'll tell you where I land in a moment. <laughs> so I started fasting and I wanted to, this was about a year and a half ago. Started fasting and I wanted, I, I, I just felt like God called, I was starting to love America again. Uh, and I was just, I was waking up to the to nationalist populist movement, recognize the value of the West and how it's being destroyed. I started waking up to these various things. And I was like, I want a spirituality that's Western. I want a Western spirituality. I want any new age, occult, Hindu BS. Nothing against people that are into it, but I didn't want it because I, because they all led to empty roads. Even like Grounding Camp was founded on, on a lot of the ideas of Osho, empty road, promise you, I promise you, it was an empty road, false coin, as, as Osho would call it. He's a false coin. Osho's a fucking false coin, <laughs> right? But I didn't want, I was done with it. I was like, I don't want any more of that stuff. I want something Western. And so I started looking for mystical, you know, I'm still, I'm still into the, into the mystical stuff, right? But something that was related to fasting and I discovered asceticism and the entire mystical tradition of Eastern Christianity, Orthodox. I started reading the writings of the early fathers and these are the, these are the writings that come, the, you know, like from the apostles, like, like students or people who are hung out with or knew the apostles, like the early desert fathers, early writers, early fathers of the church, early monks and ascetics, um, hermits, right? I started reading their writings. I was like, mind blown. I was like, wow, there is a treasure trove of wisdom in the Christian tradition. And that's when I started, that's when I bought this. Right? See that? That's when I bought that. See that Jesus up there? That started my road. That started my road. I started my road there. I bought an Orthodox Christian Bible because I was like, well, uh, this is what brought me here. This is what I'm going to start. This is what I'm going to study. So I started in Christianity again. I, mind you, I was baptized as a Catholic when I was a kid. 
and I had gone to various Protestant churches growing up, but none of them really, they didn't stick. They didn't stick for me. It just, you know, I, life goes on. I just didn't, and the, and the, the Catholic thing, uh, the Catholics were the, are, the, are the most attacked Christian faith because it's the root Christian faith. It's the root. You want to attack, you want to destroy a tree, you chop at the root. So most of the, the diabolical uh, attacks are done in and to the Catholic Church. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, so I had a moment, you know, this coming to Jesus moment, people call it. That coming to Jesus moment. There was a moment I was, I was, I was struggling. I was, it was a hard time. A little over a year ago, a little hard time. I would, because I knew I needed to stop smoking weed. And I couldn't, I, it was the first time in my life I recognized my weakness. I was like, man, I don't have the willpower. I thought I could do, I thought I could, I thought I had self-control. But there was a stronghold. I started studying spiritual warfare when I became Christian. I started work, I started uh, reading the work of, um, or watching the videos of Derek Prince because I wanted to understand the spiritual warfare because I knew I was under spiritual attack and that there were strongholds built up in my mind and in my physiology Keep, have, was keeping me addicted to smoking weed. All right. And then in a moment of despair, I turned to God and I said, I believe in you. I believe in Christ. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm reading the Bible. Uh, I need your help. I need your help. Show me that you're real. By taking this away from me, I hear that you have the power. I was just praying this way to God, you know. So I hear that you have the power to, to remove strongholds, to destroy demons, to cast them out. Save me. I need you to save me, God. I can't do this. I've tried on my own, and I'm not going to try no more. I said that. So I'm not going to try no more. Take this away from me. Well, not only he took it away from me, but he began to show me all my sins. This is called an illumination of consciousness. And there are those that believe that there's going to be a global uh, illumination of consciousness that's going to happen pretty here soon, probably in our lifetimes, where we all get to meet Christ. He's, this is, some people are going to say it's a solar flare, but it's going, to, it's going to scramble our brains in some way. Science is going to find different ways to explain it. But basically, it's going to be a global awakening, and we're going to see all of our sins. But he chooses some people to, to do this to through his graces at various points in their life. And they're more dramatic for some people than others. It wasn't super dramatic for me, but he started to show me, I started to recognize all the ways I was wrong. This is just, this is, this is just what happened to me. I'm like, wow, things that I didn't realize or, or didn't care to consider were wrong or like, ah, oh, that's not a big deal. These various sins began to darken my intellect. They began to darken my soul. There were stains on my soul. And that was why I was open to this demonic attack. I was open to, I made myself vulnerable to the strongholds. Because, and I saw when I started sinning and in, in, it was getting worse. And I was, it was just take, it was snowballing. And that's where I had been for a couple of years. The, my intellect was completely darkened. So, um, when God began to show me all my sins, he said to me, you need to, you need to confess your sins, Elliot. And I said, well, what do you mean I'm confessing? Well, I'm going to go confess. Well, confess it to who? You're showing it to me now. And he said, to my shepherds, you are Catholic, Elliot, and there's a reason why. Because... I have instilled sacraments. I have given sacraments only to the Catholic Church because it's my church. It's my first church. It's my real church. And it's the only church that has the sacrament of reconciliation. This is the sense that I got. And I had no, I had no sense of the Catholic Church. and been there since I was like 10 years old. I don't know. I had to go Google it. I had to figure it out. But where's the Catholic Church? And he said, go Received the sacrament of reconciliation. You know how to do it because you were taught how to do it when you were nine years old. And I went and I confessed my sins. I did a general confession. 
which basically means I just I wrote a long list of all the ways I was wrong. Malcolm, you're asking about my 40 ways I was wrong. That came about, that came shortly thereafter. All the ways I was wrong. I went, I was like, man, I was wrong, I was wrong, I was wrong, I was wrong. And I broke down in tears in front of this priest that I don't know. The guy was like, he was Spanish. He didn't even speak English very good, but he understood what I was saying. And he spoke just enough broken English to tell me what to do. And he gave me my penance and it was, a, it was an amazing penance. His penance for me was to read Luke chapter 15. I'll never forget because that's the story of the prodigal son. You should go read it, go read it. Go read it or go watch Derek Prince tell it on YouTube. Luke chapter 15, story of the prodigal son. So um, that's how I knew I was Catholic and I knew nothing about the Catholic faith. But now I do because I'm Catholic. And so I decided, well, I ought to learn what the Catholic faith is about. And there is a deep deposit of faith in the Catholic Church. Unlike the, now you ask me, is the Bible enough? That is a Protestant idea. Now, I'm not, I'm still baby in my faith. I don't want to knock anybody. I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just telling you what I've learned and what I know. Protestants believe that all they need is the Bible because that's the only way they were going to gain quote unquote power against the magisterium of the Catholic hierarchy. Catholic, Catholic Church has a long, old tradition. It's Christ's church. It's the one he established. He only established one church, and it's the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. Every other church outside of the Catholic Church, except for the Orthodox, which is a different story, every other church outside of the Catholic Church is in protest to Christ's church. That's why they're called Protestants. They're protesting. And in that protest, they try to um, gain knowledge outside of tradition and thus can only rely and choose only to rely on the Bible. But the Catholic Church has a uh, deposit of faith. A deposit of faith means that it is revelation, tradition, and scripture. And I'm just getting started, brother. In fact, when I talked to you earlier about starting new videos, I think I might create a new channel called Catechism. Catechism or Catechesis. Catechesis. So why do I say catechesis? Because catechesis is the word, is the Greek word used to describe the process of being educated in the faith. It's religious education, right? And so, I'm just telling you my story, and I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you why I do what I do when I suggest you do the same. Christ is the only way. That's my opinion. That is the truth. Uh, I can, at another time, and I probably will, go how I reason to that conclusion, right? The God of the Bible, Yahweh, uh, and his, he was pinned against, he was not necessarily pinned against, but he was uh, superimposed upon. He was measured up by a world full of fallen angels that created all kinds of false religions. Every false religion outside of the fate, out of Adam's, the God that Adam spoke to comes from the lie that the, that, the, that the serpent told Eve in the garden. And it comes from eating from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Israel is the first faith, the first true faith of Yahweh, the one true God, the one God, the, 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 the first principle, the, uh, the undivisible, the mono, you know, they call it monotheism, the one God. And the Bible, the Old Testament, is this story of <laughs> dealing with the stiff-necked people, he would often call them. He promised Israel that he would never leave them, no matter how fallen they were, and they fell all the time. And then finally, to seal the 
to put an end to their practice of fake sacrifice. He sacrificed his one and only perfect son. You got to understand something, that there was blood sacrifices going on since the dawn of man. We have been killing people, babies, one another, other people for sacrifice up until this day. There's blood sacrifices happening today. There are those who believe that we are run by a satanic cult. They're a bloodthirsty, warmongering cult. And you see it in the military industrial complex and all the death of the last two world wars. These people want to depopulate the planet and, 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 and offer human flesh as sacrifice to their god Gaia. This is what the whole green movement is about. Satanists haven't stopped sacrificing, but the God of the Bible, he said, stop it. The final blood sacrifice. No one else needs to die. I will give you my perfect son, my perfect self poured into man. And I'll allow you to whip him, beat him, put him up on a cross and let him die. I'm going to show you the life that comes out of that sacrifice. Rose, and he raised him up three days later. Not only did he raise him up, but then he ascended to heaven where he sits at the right hand of the God, the Father. And he's going to come back in all his glory to judge the living and the dead so that we can have everlasting life. Because God also showed us through his son that this life is dust. The Lord of this world is Satan. This is, this is a, we don't live for this world. We live for eternity. We live for the salvation of our souls, right? So that's that. So Christ is the way. Christ is the way. If you want, you want to make your way to Yahweh, the one true God, Christ is the door, right? And you don't have to do anything. Well, you do once you, I'll give you, I'll keep going with you here. Protestants believe all you got to do is say, yes, I believe in Jesus and that's it. You're saved. That is Protestant theology. That's not Catholic theology that does not come from Christ church. Works and faith, not faith alone. Works and faith. Faith and works. You got to be the thing. You can't just speak the, speak the language and don't be the thing. And so the Catholic tradition has all kinds of things that we can do. <laughs> That's what I love too about Catholic. The Catholic faith, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Protestants go to church on Sunday. You know what Catholics can do? Because doing is important. We can go to mass every day and participate in the sacrifice of the mass. We can receive the Holy Eucharist, communion, every day. We can participate in a myriad of different sacrifice, uh, uh, sacraments, sacraments, not, no longer sacrifices. It's amazing, it's so cool. And so if you wanna learn more, right? First thing, it, look, if you're gonna, I think Catholic Church is the one and only true Church of God. That's it. That's, that's my opinion. I think it's true. Um, I have no knock against anybody else. I, I think I have lots of Protestant friends. I'm not trying to convert anybody. Do what you want. Tell you where I am, who I am, and why I do it. If you want to, if you want to follow in that, if you're curious about it, even if you're just curious about it, I say go find a Catholic Church. Shop around because there's lots of them and they're not all good. I understand the problems in the Catholic Church and they are a myriad. There's a whole lot of problems in the Catholic Church right now because we, the church is going through its passion just like Christ did in his last days, meaning we're getting whooped. The Catholic Church is being whooped from the inside and out. There's a whole lot of problems in it. Just like there's a whole lot of problems in America, and I still love America. I will never stop being American. I ain't leaving America because America has problems. It's the same thing with, with the Catholic Church. There's problems. I was baptized Catholic. So 
one of the things that we say uh, during mass is look at, don't, don't look at our sins. We ask the Lord, don't look at our sins, but look at the faith of your church. Do not look at our sins because there are many. And it's probably at its pinnacle right now because we are waiting the return of the savior. And uh, it's going to get darkest right before there is a waking up. It's going to be a big shift. There's going to be a change, but it has to get bad first. So it's bad, right? God bless you for, at least I'm saying about me, God bless me for being willing to join when it's bad, right? That's, that's called faith. Um, find a church. And here's the, great, here's the great thing about, another great thing about the Catholic tradition. They have a process called catechesis. Catechesis is instruction in the faith. A lot of uh, Protestant churches, you go there and you just you go on Sunday. And if the guy says something cool, you clap. Um, and, and I'm not knocking them again. There's something called R I R C I A rights. Of, it's an initiation rights of initiation for Christian adults. I think that's what it is. R I C rights of initiation for Christian adult Catholic adults. Um, inquire about their R C I A. Class, take the RCI. You don't have to. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to do anything. You just take the class to learn, or do like what I'm doing with my children, because I decided not to. I, the church I go to is just, it's okay. The parish that I go to, Catholics call it parish. The parish I go to, it's okay. I go there because I can receive the sacraments. I don't. I'm not into the. I'm not into their their style and the things that they do. They all wear masks. I'm the only one that doesn't wear masks. They're, they're very worldly, let me put it that way. You know, it's, it's, they're a part of what Michael Voris would call the Church of Nice, Mick Church, the Fallen Church. But the Lord's bishops are there. His, his, his um, I'm sorry, his uh, shepherds are there. And so I can receive, I can receive the sacraments. So I go and I receive the sacraments every day. I don't want to take my kids there. And then I go to a, I also go to a, uh, a traditional Catholic mass, a traditional uh, Latin mass. And the whole thing is in Latin. And I like them because, you know, I like trad con. I like traditional conservative stuff. And they're super good. Like all the women cover, cover their heads. It's beautiful. You look at, it's a traditional Catholic. If you can find a traditional Catholic church, like the St. Pius uh, SSPX, they call it. Um, there are lots of them. There's some of them that you can find. And if you like the, the real traditional stuff, like I like traditional stuff, that'd be a great place to raise your family. But you got to learn Latin. And, I'm not, and my kids, I'm not going to teach them Latin. So I'm catechizing them myself. And the way I'm doing that, and that's why I started, I figured I, I'm, 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 letting the, I'm letting the father guide me. I'm not going to choose it and just do it. But I'm just speaking to you guys. I speak off the cuff when I'm speaking with you guys. Um, there's a book. First of all, there are books called Catechisms, Catechism of the Catholic Church. And there are a few of them that are legit, right? Like just the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is the newest one. But then there are older ones, and there are ones that, are ma that were made. I like older ones. They were made like, you know, before a lot of the BS of our current day. And one is called the Baltimore Catechism. And there are three levels. Level one is for like elementary school kids. Level four is for like adults like us. Go get yourself a, a level four uh, Baltimore catechism. Go on Amazon. You can buy it right now for like 10 bucks, maybe less. The adult level four Baltimore catechism and read it. See if you agree. If you want to learn anything, you learn more about it. And so I think the most opportunities are available to us as Christians in the Catholic Church. It's just my opinion. And it's true. <laughs> Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, 
and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.